Hello, darlings. Happy Valentine's Day. It is I, Michael Knowles, the Daily Wire's love guru. The producers have been perusing Reddit, the deep bowels of the internet, for the myriad romantic dilemmas that people are facing today so that I can pontificate and give you my expert advice. They call him the love guru. We have five files here, five very difficult, thorny romantic cases. We will be going through them one by one. Without further ado, let's get started on case number one. She canceled our date because of my zodiac sign. Well, you know, actually on second thought, here's the advice. Uh, according to the people of Reddit. Astrology is just racism for women. (laughs) True. Uh, She's obviously cancer. Oh, oh, come on. That's pretty funny. Uh, That's such a Virgo thing to do. You're telling me. Uh, Well, I mean, you are an Aries. Hmm. All right. Let's see this guy's full issue. I'm a bit thrown off by this, but I was canceled on due to my Zodiac sign. Throughout the week before work, I visit a coffee shop. I go practically every weekday, and I've been seeing the same barista there every morning. We seemed to click well with our small conversations, and after chatting with her for a few weeks, I decided to offer my number since she was on the clock. Uh, She declined to take my number, (laughs) but gave me her Snapchat. (laughs) Okay. We chatted a bit on Snapchat and agreed to go on a date Friday. About an hour after that, she said she wouldn't be able to go out with me because she saw on my Snap profile that I was an Aries. She said she doesn't date Aries, but it was nice meeting me. Is this something that is common in the dating world? I've never been rejected over my Zodiac sign uh, before, so it kind of surprised me. Okay, I have a few different layers of advice here. First of all, if a woman is making these big sorts of decisions, potentially life-changing decisions based on astrology, run. Not merely because she's very probably an idiot, but also because she might be a witch. We have found a witch, might we burn, huh? See, the issue with astrology in the Bible, when they say don't you know, consult astrologers and things, is not because astrologers are charlatans, although very often they are charlatans, but also because uh, astrology is obviously real and can compromise your free will. So don't do that. You know? So sometimes it's real. And you, so you don't want to do that. That's a very, very bad thing. She sounds a little bit kooky. So probably that would ha- give you a pretty terrible life. And then the, I'd say the deepest layer of advice here is it might just be an excuse because she doesn't like you that much after you chatted. So I hate to give you the really hard advice here, but it's probably just an excuse. Like, oh no, I'm, I'm busy. I've got, yeah, I've got to study for an exam. Oh yeah, my grandma died. Oh, my other grandma died. Oh, my third grandma died. You say, huh? It's not you. It's me. I don't think that works. So it's okay, buddy. There's more fish in the sea. Number two, pretty sure this girl I'm seeing has an OnlyFans. Oh, uh, how do I find the evidence? Uh, you go to OnlyFans.com. Is that easy? Uh, the first response is, don't push your misogynistic white male BS on her. If you can't handle it, leave. No need to try to prevent her from living her best life. Yeah, if you don't love me when I'm a prostitute, you can't have me when I remain a prostitute because I refuse to give it up for a better life. Um, no, no, that, that's not great advice. Tiny Hands 25 says, I guess it just really depends on how hot she is. <laughs> a kid is already tough, but maybe she's enough of a smoke show to get over that. And an OnlyFans, I guess maybe she has a child too, uh, and she could be making bank. So that, that advice is not only do you need to respect the OnlyFans thing, but hey, you can also make some money on it. Cha-ching. Not, <laughs> you can be a pimp. You, you can be what you've always wanted to be, a pimp. Okay. What's the full problem here, my friend? Let's not get into the ins and outs of why I think this girl has an OnlyFans. All right. Calm down here with the graphic descriptions. Uh, she has kids and she financially carries them and her legit, universally unattractive female friend who babysits for her. Uh, She does side hustles, some that I know about, and she doesn't live like a super boss high roller, but to me there's no way her life adds up. She says she doesn't get help from baby daddies or family. She seemed from the start to have suspiciously really good game at sending me captioned spicy photos over the phone that I didn't request or instigate. 
Uh, there are a few other reasons, but I will not get into them since they are a bit more personal in nature. I'm 90% sure she has this going on. She claims that she's not doing it and has never done anything like that. I don't believe her. The bottom line is, my position is, as a man with resources, I'm doing what I'm doing anyway because I have to do, to, to do my due diligence. It's not a choice. It's really more about moral due diligence. I can't seriously be with a person who would do something like that and lie about it to me if she wants to involve me in her life. She already has strikes against her, and it's amazing I'm still seeing her knowing she already has kids and everything. I'm starting to like the girl a lot more than I like you. <laughs> I think you're, yeah, I, you might be the baddie here, guy, if this is your attitude. Uh, how do I find out that she has an OnlyFans? How do I discover it? We've already had conversations where she knows a surprising amount of information about how that works for girls. She knows about geoblocking. How do I find the evidence? I think I can handle it if I just 100% have the evidence. You sound like a freaking psycho. This woman should run from you as fast as she possibly can. There should be a this woman shaped hole in the door. She runs so fast out of the room because you're pursuing her. How charitable that you would even entertain the possibility of having a relationship with her, even though she's already got all those strikes against her. You know, like kids. She didn't even make the responsible choice and kill her child when she got knocked up. Gosh, can you, you're like Mother Teresa, aren't you, buddy? Good grief. I don't know, maybe she has an OnlyFans, maybe not. You obviously, you can't trust her. That's more a you problem than a her problem. You've, you're like calling in the NSA and the FBI to figure out the details of this woman's past life. Good, go seek help. See, go get a, you, you don't need a, a girlfriend. You need a therapist. Go find a therapist. All right, next question, number three. I saw my friend's fiance on a dating app. I haven't talked to him in a few years. Should I say something to him? Oh, the current fiance. Yikes. This is the, the answers from people on Reddit. Why assume that the fiance is, is cheating him, on him rather? Uh, they could be open or polyamorous and telling him would just shame their fun and open lifestyle. Just mind your business and don't force your radical and close-minded opinion on him that marriage has a meaning. You know your radical, insane opinion that you shouldn't just be a hedonistic, sexual degenerate? You know, that crazy view? <laughs> uh, next one. Uh, t- with the, I want to read the name for this second respondent. Tillicum was framed. That was the uh, SeaWorld killer whale that, that killed that lady. Great name. Uh, send him an anonymous email. Fair enough. Champagne or boy. The correct thing is to match her and I'm not going to read that word, but it's uh, naughty. And no, you should not do that to her. Uh, none of your business. Your friend will never believe you. Been there, done that. That might be true as well. All right, let's get the whole story. Hi, all. I was swiping through Bumble last night, and I was surprised to see my friend's fiance pop up on my screen. She was verified through the app, so I don't think it was a bot. Her post didn't mention anything about her being in an open relationship or anything like that. I just remember my friend posting something on social media about her like a week ago, about how lucky he is to have her and how much she means to him. So it kind of threw me for a loop. I checked and the post is still there and his profile pic is of him and her. His relationship status says they are engaged. They also have a young child together. Oh my gosh. Uh, The thing is that I'm not close with him anymore. We went to high school together and then worked for a few years together at the same job. We got along pretty well and hung out outside of work, but stopped talking over time. I checked my messages, and the last time I talked to him directly was over two years ago. We'll interact on each other's social media posts every once in a while, but that's about it. My question is, should I bring this to his attention? I feel some obligation since we used to be friends. But at the same time, we haven't talked in a while, so maybe it's not my place. What is the correct thing to do here? I, the thing is, I don't know how dating apps work. Because I got together, I got back together with my now wife, like right as dating apps were coming out. You've got mail. So it was, I just, I missed it. So I don't, and the reason I mention this is, is it possible that this chick is just still is on the dating apps, but she's not actively using it. So what did she sign up for it six months ago? And just, she's, so people are still seeing her and it's, it's, but she's not really actively doing it. I don't know. I, you know, if you could figure that out, that would be helpful because if she is still prowling about, even though she's allegedly engaged to this guy, I would, I would tell him. 
I know the impulse here is don't get involved. Don't, you know, it's easier to just ignore it. But if this person is in any way still your friend, I do think you probably owe it to him to just, it, you, you don't need to make any accusations. You don't need to, you don't need to really involve yourself and swipe her, you know, and then go on a date and be like, hey lady, stop screwing around on my friend. Uh, but you could just maybe shoot him a note or a text or whatever and say, hey bro, uh, this is going to seem kind of weird. I don't want to butt my nose in where it doesn't belong. I'm sure it's just some glitch on the website or something, but I saw your I was swiping and I saw your fiance on this thing. I just wanted to give you a heads up. No problem. The thing is, if, as one of the commenters said, if your friend or former friend reacts in a really negative way, it doesn't matter because you guys aren't that close anymore. Uh, but I, I do think it is the right thing to do. So I, I would do it. I would, I would let him know. I think you'd feel bad if, I mean, I guess they, I was going to say if they got married and had kids, and, but I guess they already have a kid together, which is adds even more craziness to this whole scenario. But I do think you'd feel worse if they, you know, years and years later, he finds out this chickie has been sleeping around the entire time and it's just a complete betrayal of of their entire married life. So I would do it. I'd bite the bullet and do it. Worst case, you lose a friend that you don't see that much anymore. We'll get to more saucy, scintillating advice in just one second. First though, you know that inflation is going through the roof. It's cleaning out your pockets with really bad policy geared against the middle class, which is why it has never been more important to rethink how we shop and choose brands that are effective, safe, and in it for the long haul. Our partner, Naturally It's Clean, can help. Naturally It's Clean is dedicated to providing the most effective cleaning products for your home while reducing your cost, reducing your waste, and reducing other harmful chemicals in your home. Their safer chemistry solutions use nature's powerful plant-based enzymes to clean areas of your home, such as the bathroom, the floors, and the kitchen. They don't just push the muck around. They use those enzymes to break it down. Now, you might be saying, Michael, how can this help you fight inflation? Well, because they not only sell ready-to-use bottles, but they also offer many of their top cleaning solutions in cost-saving concentrate options. A lot of their concentrate solutions will yield 12 bottles, driving down the cost per bottle, saving you big money. Head on over right now to naturallyitsclean.com. Get the Daily Wire Essential Kit, stocked with four great products for 15% off. Just go to naturallyitsclean.com slash Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Use promo code Michael to save an additional 15% off your order. Do not delay. Get this break from Biden inflation. Try out these great cleaning products, naturallyitsclean.com slash Michael. Next up, number four. He made me go half on the first date. Any reason is a good reason not to continue dating if you're not interested, says one person. Another person, all details aside, seeing a total of $115 being spent on a first date is sickening because it's that's far too little to impress a woman. I don't know. Okay. Always offer to pay half and always refuse to pay more than half. Stick to this at all costs. Works for any gender. No. What are you? I, what? What? Are you a... Uh, are there are a lot of words I want to use right now that are not family friendly. Are you a girly man? What do you mean? Always. Just every... Look, every gender just needs to pay half and you should never hold the door for a woman and you should... Talk, that's, I'm, I'm a male feminist. Yeah. Okay, bro. Prob's a hot take. But I find that a valid reason to no longer want to pursue something. I believe whoever initiated the date should pay. Letting you split the whole thing, if offered, wouldn't be a turnoff to me. But splitting way unevenly is. Your argument is a euphemism for buy things for me. Yeah, sort of, because men and women are different. Okay, let's see the full post. I, 24-year-old female, met this guy on Hinge, 32-year-old male, and he invited me out to dinner. Oh, okay. Okay. He chose the time and place. We made it there and it was a 30 minute wait. So he suggested getting a drink at a bar across the street. We ended up getting our appetizer there too, since the wait was a bit long. I offered to pay for the drinks. Didn't think he would let me, but he said, it's okay. I could pay for the next dinner, I guess. Uh, The drinks and appetizer was 45 bucks. He paid. We made it to dinner and it rounded up to about 70. I paid. Oh my gosh. This is extremely unattractive to me only because it was a first date. He knew he would get me to pay for dinner and ordered more appetizers and lots of extras. He chose the place and and initiated the date. Oh my gosh. Uh, But I ended up paying. Outside of this, the conversation was okay. Honestly, the monetary portion of the date threw me off and was pretty gross to me. I've never had that happen. He texted me, but I haven't texted back. I think I'm no longer interested. Is this a good reason to cut him off? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. I'm not totally opposed to splitting checks, especially now people go on like a thousand dates every day because of all the dating apps. And you can, especially if you're in a big city, you just always are swiping right. Uh, So 
I'm not in all cases 100% opposed to splitting the check. I would never do it. I mean, I find it personally kind of repugnant, but I understand why some people do it now, especially if they're much younger, especially if they don't have, you know, any kind of savings or anything. But in, oh my gosh, to have the woman pay for dinner, you invite the woman out, you pick the place, and then you have the woman pay for more than half of the bill. That is so, so lame. Oh my gosh. Just as a rule, this is a rule in all of life. If you invite someone to dinner, and especially if you pick the place, but just in general, if you invite someone to dinner, you are expected to pick up the bill. Now, the other person might say, here, let's split it. Let's, and maybe, you know, you can do that little dance and then you split it. Oh, okay, fine. But it, it is just, man, woman, child, anyone you're, you happen to be having a meal with, if you invite them out, it is expected that you will pay for it. When did people, people don't learn manners anymore. Well, the, you get the last laugh, I guess, because this jerk doesn't end up getting a nice, nice girlfriend. So, haha, too bad for him. Okay. Last relationship problem. And then I've got to, listen, I've got other patients that I've got to see. I can't just deal with Reddit all day. Uh, He said I have potential if I lost weight. (laughs) Okay. All right. So uh, the responses, it's code for, I will sleep with you, but as soon as I find someone else, I'm gone. You know what will make you perfect losing the 175 pounds of this rude jerk of a guy says someone else. If a man applied this logic, he'd be forever alone. Sure, but men and women are different, so whatever. A girl canceled a date after my confession that I'm not exactly six feet tall. I'm 5'11". Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, you know, anyone who says I'm six feet tall is 5'11", because if you're six feet tall, you say you're 6'1". Okay, let's see the full story. I, a 23-year-old female, had a third date with this guy, a 23-year-old guy. Everything was fine until he mentioned that he already finds me cute, but I would be perfect if I lost weight. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I've always been upfront about the fact that I'm on the larger side. I'm 175 centimeters and weigh 80 kilograms and are apparently French or something. Why are you using those silly liberal measurements? Whatever. I don't know. 80, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. I'm an American. Speak American, damn it. So it's not like it was a surprise for him before we met. I asked him, why are we even here then? He said that he would find it stupid to stop himself from dating me which I personally think that's weird because it's clearly an important thing for him. My self-esteem isn't at its highest to begin with, so this definitely isn't helping either. So, okay, the producers tell me that's 170 pounds. Okay, so, you know, a little bit on the larger side, but you're the guy, whatever. I mean, people come in all shapes and sizes, that's fine. And the guy is saying, I think you're attractive, but but you're not exactly perfect for how I want you now. So, you know, figure it out and then, then we can be together. Uh, yeah, you, you should run screaming from this guy because it's, it's not merely that the guy finds thinner women more attractive. That, that's not even the problem. The problem is that he thinks that your little love affair, I don't, even, I don't really like the word relationship. It's so clinical and modern and lame and millennial. We're, we're in a relationship. We're in a partnership. So you sound like you're in an, an accounting firm or something. Uh, so in your, your love affair, what, what he's making the whole thing about is his tastes, his fantasies, his, his idea and his idol of what his beloved will be. And so what he's saying is you almost kind of fit into that. So I'm going to try to squeeze, pardon my uh, imagery here. I'm going to try to squeeze it and make it all fit into this box that I've created of, of the person I want to be in love with. And you'll sort of do for now. You're almost there, but that's not really love, right? He's not in love with you, or it doesn't really seem to have any care for you at all. He loves this. He, he has an infatuation. He has, he has, has a love of this, this image he has concocted for himself. And he's going to try to superimpose that image over you or vice versa. Uh, but he sounds like just a big loser. Loser, loser. This guy who says for you to lose weight, he's a big loser, if you ask me, and you should uh, run run away from him. Okay, that's the I guess a lot of the modern dating advice with these schmucky dudes. This was this was the schmucky dude episode. I'm sure there are crazy women out there too who write into these things, but this seems to be the schmucky dude episode. A lot of schmucky dudes around, and ladies, you should flee. I'm Michael Knowles, the love guru, the love doctor here at the Daily Wire. We will see you next Valentine's Day. Arr.